Welcome back to the Tipsy Tailgate. We're happy to bring you episode one of season two of this podcast. We thank you for all your support throughout season one, and we continue to hope to entertain you guys. If you're tuned in, we have a couple of announcements. First off, please follow us at Tipsy Tailgate on Instagram and TikTok. We post daily updates and uh, content that you won't find on our YouTube there. Um, At the moment, our TikTok's been blowing up, and we average 10,000 views a video, just under 600 followers on our channel. So please check us out over there. Um, Secondly, this is a season two special, meaning all of our content will be NFL and fantasy football related. Um, So please check us out. Fantasy football and football is just starting tomorrow with Thursday Night Football, and we're very excited about the season. So we're excited to bring you more content throughout the year. Uh, And thirdly, and most importantly, we have partnered with the ColorCast app that will be a live audio app. Uh, to do our podcast on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. every Wednesday following this Wednesday. So please make sure to download ColorCast on the App Store and follow us at Tipsy Tailgate. Um, And make sure you mark your calendars down for every Wednesday at 8 p.m. This is also going to be a season full of audio-only podcasts. So give us some feedback, whether you like it or not. Um, And make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and ColorCast. Uh, And without further ado, let's get into some football. So we're going to start here, uh, first episode of the season. Welcome back. Introduce yourself, boys. What's going on? Uh, it's great to be back. Uh, this is Ben. Uh, I'm just glad to be back with the boys doing what we love. Yeah, it's Jake. We're here. We're back. A lot more Jets content this season. I know the people wanted it. So yeah, let's get into it. Yep, we're going to make the Jet fans happy. Maybe not with our rankings, but with, with more uh, content for sure. So let's get started. We're going to go through um, the NFL uh, team predictions we made. We, we went through every game of every schedule, and we marked down what we like, wins, losses, home games, away games, all of that. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go, and we're going to run through some teams. If we have a problem with one of the rankings, we're going to object a little bit and just give a quick reason why. So I'll start it off. Um, actually, you want to start it off with the Texans? Yeah, I mean, the Texans, I think they win at most two or three games. They're just a completely, you know, distraught franchise right now, and I really see no hope for them. I um, I actually think the Texans are going to go 0 and 17. I think that they are one of the worst teams I've ever seen on paper. They have no talent. Uh, their head coach isn't seems like a good guy, but do, isn't really qualified to be a head coach. And you know, even if he was, there's not much he can do with this roster. So I say 0 and 17. Yeah, and uh, as of right now, Watson looks like he's not going to play at all. Um, so I, I have him at one and sixteen. Uh, next up, thirty-one. Uh, coming out thirty-one on our power rankings, the Lions. I have them at two and fifteen. Not much to say here. I think Goff and Hawkinson with Swift could probably put a little bit of an offense together, but their O line is still going to struggle even with Sewell, um, and their defense is just going to be a disaster. So I, I think two and fifteen is a fitting uh, ranking there. Yeah, I mean, I think if people step up for the Lions, they could be in some games, but ultimately, like, they just don't have what it takes to be in them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm not expecting much from them. I have them at 4-13, and 13, not much of a difference. Um, you know, Dan Campbell, I, I really don't think that he should be a head coach in the NFL. And, you know, Jared Goff's a good but not great quarterback, and he's not the kind of quarterback that could resurrect a franchise like the Lions. Right. Yeah, and uh, coming in at 30th, I have the Jags at 3-14. and 14. I think Lawrence has a little bit of a rough year um not necessarily because of his play but more so because of his help and just the rookie slumps that that you see a lot of these quarterbacks going through Uh, I think he was kind of put into that starting position maybe a little too soon for a team that's not ready um I think him sitting behind maybe kind of what the 49ers are doing with Trey Lance would have been a little bit more helpful um but I I think 3-14 is a fitting record here for the Jags I'm in perfect agreement with that. I just don't see how Trevor Lawrence can turn them around so quickly. Yeah, I agree as well. 3-14, and you know, the O-line is just horrible. They have some talent at the skill position, but, you know, outside of Lawrence and a couple receivers, not a very good roster. And you see the reports that the locker room's turning on Urban, so you have to worry about that as well. Yep, let's go here. Number 29, Eagles, 3-14. and Not much to say there. I just think this is a disaster of a team. They hate Jalen Hurts for some reason. He continues to prove that he's a pretty solid quarterback at least, and they continue to try to replace him with Watson or whoever else. And uh, I, I just I don't really love what the Eagles are doing there. Their management seems like they don't know how to make their mind. So I'm going 3-14 and here. I'm in agreement as well. I mean, I like Jalen Hurts. I think he's can be a good quarterback in the right system, and I think he's one of the most determined guys in the NFL. 
However, with this roster, I just can't, you know, see him. Yeah, I'm basically on the same page with you guys. I have him at 2-15. and 15, So, you know, I have him as the worst team in the worst division in football. So, you know, that's pretty telling. Yep, for sure. Uh, coming in here at 28th uh, to Jake's hate, 3-14, and 14, the Jets. Um, I actually think that the Jets are trending upwards. It's just they're, they have a lot of issues um, with the scheduling. This, the AFC East now is a really good division, and, uh, and I think it's going to be pretty tough for them to get some wins. You know, I would obviously disagree with that because I think there's a brand new system coming in in New York. I think we've had terrible coaching staffs, you know, for the past eight years, really. And this is the first time that we've really had, you know, guys in the locker room that can contribute. So I, I love them. I think they're going to go, you know, six and 11 maybe. Um, but yeah, you know, I think they are trending upwards and they're going to be good. Yeah, I'm on the same page with you guys. Same record as Aiden as well. All right, we have the Bengals coming in here at 4-13. and 13. I think Burrow struggles a little bit uh, coming back from the injury. I think next year is when he'll get back on pace. Uh, and also the rumors about Jamar Chase uh, struggling here in, in training camp and in preseason. Uh, I don't know if they're real, but that's not what you want to see when you grab a guy top five, especially receiver. For receivers, you really expect that guy to be a Hall of Famer if you get him top five. And hearing struggles right off the bat, more so than guys that have been drafted in the fifth, fourth round, whatever it is, it's kind of it's kind of scary if you're a Bengal fan. But I, I think they'll pan out. But four and thirteen is what I have them at. All right, coming in next, the Falcons, five and twelve. Um, a lot of people don't like Matt Ryan and they don't like this team. I'm I don't like this team just for their defense really. I think Mike Davis is going to be a solid RB in this offense even though the O-line's not great. Matt Ryan continues to put up decent numbers and Kyle Pitts now obviously losing Julio Jones, but they get to replace him with Calvin Ridley cuz he's been a monster uh, uh weapon there in Atlanta. So I think 5 and 12 is a fitting record for them. I would have them less than 5 wins. I think this team is just a catastrophe right now. I mean Arthur Smith He's he's going to be a good coach if he gets the right quarterback. However, you don't sell your team and just leave Matt Ryan with Calvin Ridley. So, you know, it's a, it's a tough look. I actually disagree with both of you. I think they're going to be a lot more competitive than you guys think. I, I think they could hit a 7-10 and 10 record. I think they're actually going to have a top six offense in the league in terms of yards and maybe scoring. So, you know, I'm, I'm really not ruling out the Falcons to be a competitive team. Obviously not a playoff team, but I could see them winning a few games. All right, coming in at 25, we have the Las Vegas Raiders in their new stadium. I have them, uh, like I said, 5-12. and 12. I think some people have this team a little bit higher than they should. Obviously, Darren Waller, Josh Jacobs, um, they have weapons, Henry Ruggs. But I don't think their defense is in any shape to, to be a competitive team. I don't think their offense with Derek Carr is really in a great shape either. I love Darren Waller. I think he's amazing. Josh Jacobs kind of has disappointed last year for me. Um, hopefully he gets back on track. But now they have Kenyon Drake there. So if it's a committee, then it's not looking like Josh Jacobs going to pan out to be the top RB that we looked like he was from his rookie year. Um, so I think 5-12 and 12 makes sense here. I think they're going to be a decent bit better than 5-12. and 12. I could even see them winning eight games this year. Um, you know, I think their defense has gotten a lot better this offseason. They are a young team, and now those guys have gotten a little bit more experience. I think Derek Carr is an above average quarterback in this league and if Henry Ruggs steps it up if Hunter Renfro steps it up they could be good I I actually completely agree with Jake we had the same exact record eight and nine I think Carr's ready to pop I think they're building a decent offense around him and I think Jacobs is due for a bounce back year all right um coming in at 24 Giants 5 and 12 I actually had pretty high hopes for the Giants this year if it wasn't for all the bad news coming out of training camp and preseason with their fights with Joe Judge getting some bad looks. Um, I really would be convinced that this team would be a chance at a wild card, but uh, I'm not ready to do that knowing that they've been struggling in, in camp and, and the chemistry might be a little off. Obviously, Saquon's a little banged up coming into the year, but and so is Galladay, honestly. But this is a team that has good talent, and it really comes down to Danny, Danny Dimes. If Danny Dimes can really take a step forward this is a team that could have good potential going forward I mean they had a couple offseason moves that were very very important and I think that it's a team that could be trending upwards as long as their quarterback hits for me I mean I'm really don't like the Giants I think they overpaid for Dory Jackson and Kenny Galladay and I don't think anything's gonna pan out because their quarterback sucks I mean this is a guy who won't have a job next year 
you know, I tell all my Giants fan, uh, friends, you should have taken Fields when you when you had the chance to take him. Because Fields is going to pan out, I believe, to be something great. And the Giants are going to need that quarterback. I actually, I think the Giants have a chance to go 8-9, and 9-8, nine, nine and eight, you know, almost 500. Um, I think that outside of quarterback, they're loaded in every single position. So I really think that through coaching and the rest of the roster, I think Daniel Jones can get this team to 8-9, and 9-8. Nine, nine and eight. That's not to say Daniel Jones is good. It's just to say that, you know, the team around him is pretty good. And uh, these next three are, are kind of maybe my, I don't know if my hottest takes, but definitely uh, some of them. I have the Vikings at 5-12. and 12. I really, I'm not high on them at all. I think, I mean, obviously, Justin Jefferson, Thielen, Dalvin Cook, all those boys. Uh, I don't trust Kirk Cousins at all. I trust him at throwing the ball deep and probably getting it picked off, but I don't trust him in carrying a team to a lot of wins or the playoffs. Um, I love their weapons, and their O-line's pretty solid, but their defense, I think, is terrible. I don't think their defense, I think they have possibly the worst secondary in the league i think pat peterson is above is above his age and i don't think he's going to play that well especially especially in a new place and i think that one injury to um i'm blanking on their safety's name um harrison smith. Har- yeah. yeah one one injury to harrison smith and this defense is an absolute disaster because of their secondary i have them at five and twelve it's one of my hotter takes but i stick to it um, agreement over here on this side of the table. Um, then another one here, Panthers six and eleven. I think the Panther Panthers have really good potential. It's it's kind of my Giants scenario. If um if Sam if Sam Darnold can really prove that he's uh valuable or even franchise quarterback or serviceable quarterback in this league, and he does it here on the in Carolina, I think this team could be good. CMC is back. I really like Chubba Hubbard as a backup which we'll get to on the fantasy special. Um, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, this is a team that has weapons. Their defense is going to surprise. Jeremy Chin, um, uh, I'm blank, Brian JC Burns. Horn. Yeah, JC Horn, Brian Burns. This is a really young team, and if Darnold hits, I really think this team could be trending upwards. And I do think Darnold will hit. I mean, Darnold has weapons, and he, he had not only one running back, but two running backs that can take the load off of him. Their O line is questionable, so you know he's gonna get hit the same way he did in uh, with the Jets. However, I think he gets the job done there. I I actually I agree with Jake. I think the Panthers are gonna be about nine and eight, maybe even ten and seven. I think that the weapons that Donald has to work with are perfect. He's familiar with a guy like like Robbie Anderson, and you don't really have to be familiar with a guy like Christian McCaffrey because he's just that good. So I'm not really worried about the Panthers. I think they're gonna have a really good year. All right, and then we're gonna go Broncos here. I have Broncos at seven and ten. I think that they really messed up giving Teddy Bridgewater the starting honors. I think Drew Locke is the much better fit at QB at this uh, at the, for their squad. I mean, if you look at their weapons, they have Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy. I mean, obviously Sutton's a monster. He's a deep threat, and he's I think he's gonna prove his value as a top wide receiver in this league this year, um, coming off injury. But uh, Jerry Judy, they got Fant there, KJ Hamler, Tim Patrick. I mean, this is a uh, stacked, stacked team. Uh, Javante Williams backing up Melvin Gordon. Like it's a, it's a really set squad. Uh, at least offensively, they, I think, I believe they got two corners um, that are pretty, pretty solid um, this off season. And this could be a team that surprises with Bradley Chubb and Von Miller back. Uh, seven and ten, I, I think, is a pretty solid record for them. I uh, I actually disagree with you about Drew Locke. I think that Drew Locke uh, used up all of his chances. I don't think he's a very good quarterback. I think Teddy Bridgewater has proven that he's actually a better player than Drew Locke. So you know, I actually I don't think the Broncos. With that being said, I don't think the Broncos will be very good, purely for the fact that I don't think Van is a good head coach at all. So you know. Uh, I don't think the Broncos are going to be very good, but at the same time, I think they made the right call with Teddy Bridgewater. All right, and we're going to go rapid fire on these next four, and then if you have if you have to object, then go ahead. Steelers, I got them at seven and ten. I got them at nine and eight. Okay, that's that's right around. Uh, Bears, I got them at eight and nine. I think it takes a while for them to get Fields in at starter, but once he does, he shows pretty good flashes. I think they'll go eight and nine, but I think Fields is going to play by week three. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I think the Saints go eight and nine, and I think the Dolphins go eight and nine. Uh, agreement here. Um, then coming up at sixteen, New England Patriots. I have them at ten and seven. Eleven and six. This might be uh, both your guys' hottest takes of the night because 
just because you got a guy named Mac Jones who had every weapon imaginable in college, and now you have zero wide receivers besides Jacoby Myers, I would not put them as a 10-win team. It's not about that, though. It's not about the receivers. It's about the running game. It's about the O-line. It's about Belichick. It's about how half the defense opted out last year, and they're all back. The defense that was ranked number two two years ago, half of them opted out. They're now all back. Not Gilmore's so, hurt, though. Well, he's going to be back in week six. He, he'll be back eventually. So, you know, I really think, you know, and I, I honestly, it kind of annoys me when people say, oh, you think you have Mac Jones, you, you have an upgraded offense. No, it's not about that. It's never been about that. It's about Bill. It's about the defense. That's how the Patriots have always won their championships. So, with that being said, I think we're going to be a really good competitive team this year. I And I agree here with with Ben a lot. I think that not even not only the defense, which I think is going to have one of the best cornerback crews, even with Gilmore out, uh, with the guy we got from, Ra- from the Ravens, even with the guys from before that. J.C. Jackson is a turnover machine. Uh, all these guys on the defensive side I love. Kyle Duggar I think is going to make a huge step up this year. The, the pass rush looks much more improved. But I think most importantly... The double tight end um, layout, I, I don't think either of the tight ends really have a huge year, but I think what it does is it, it proves the power run game and the dink and dunk game. I think Damian Harris has a huge year, and Mac Jones just dumps it off to Jacoby Myers and, and James White, and we just eat yards away, hold the ball, long long possession each game, and let the defense do a job, maybe get a score every other game. And then this offense could just do what it needs to do just to get some wins. I think ten and seven is realistic here. Um, now we have the Chargers at eleven and six, Cardinals at ten and seven, Cowboys actually, at ten and I seven. I have the Cardinals at eight and nine, and I don't think they'll make the playoffs. Neither do I. Neither. I think they have an overrated team, an overrated roster. I think Kyler's a very good quarterback, but I think Cliff Kingsbury is a very overrated head coach. Absolutely, and I think the Chargers are going to be a 12-13 win team this year. I think Herbert has all the tools imaginable. They hired a defensive-minded guy to be their coach because you know Herbert's going to get the job done either way. They've always been that team that's been so close but couldn't just take themselves over the edge, and I think this is the year they do it. I can definitely get behind that. Um, up next, we have, um, like I said, 13, Cowboys 10-7, and 7, 12, uh, Washington football team 11-6. and 6. I, I think actually, they're a playoff team. I have them at 6-11. and 11. Yeah, I, I would agree with that wow. as well. I think Fitzpatrick... I respect the guy. He's had a great career for the talent that he has to work with. I just, I don't think that he'll get that team to 11-6. Right. I think that that Fitzpatrick probably doesn't last a full year, but I think with the combination of Antonio Gibson, Terry McLaurin, and I think Logan Thomas makes a huge jump this year, as we'll say on our fantasy section. Um, I think this defense is top five, if not top three. I agree with I that. I think the defense carries, and... Think about it. The division they're in, it's not hard to, to steal two wins from all of those teams besides maybe the Cowboys. In my you opinion, know? it really, that whole division depends on, and it's the same thing every year, it depends on if the Cowboys will play up to their potential. That's right, what huh? the division has always been about. Agreed. Uh, 11th, we have the Colts. Uh, I'd be much higher on the Colts if the Carson Wentz and Quentin Nelson didn't get hurt to begin the year. I think they, they'll both be back, or at least Carson Wentz will be. For the first week, but um, now the chemistry's off. Not as much practice together. I have them at ten and seven. Seahawks I have at thirteen and four, and then the Niners I have at eleven and six. I actually, I have the Niners at twelve and five, then the Seahawks at eleven and six, and we're gonna get back. We're gonna get to this a little later. I have the Rams at thirteen and four, so I think the Rams are gonna be the best team in that division. Uh, but you know, honestly, I think out of those three, it really is a coin flip. They're all so close. Yeah, but uh, I got to go with the Rams out of that division. Okay, I can get behind that. Um, as we'll see in our next segment. Um, so ten, so yeah, eight, uh, nine Niners at eleven and six, eight Titans at thirteen and four, Rams twelve and five, Browns thirteen and four. I agree with that. I agree with the Browns. Good. Um, Ravens eleven and six. I feel like I was a little bit too high on the Ravens. Um, I just really like their defense. I, I don't actually, know. Sorry to cut you yeah, off. I have the Ravens at nine and eight. I think they're going to be very disappointing this season. Yeah, I could get behind that. Um, we have right now the Packers at thirteen and four, uh, at fourth. Bills third, twelve and five. Bucks second at thirteen and four, and the Chiefs at fifteen and one in first place. I have those two flips. So I have the Bucks at fifteen and two, and the Chiefs at thirteen and four. Yeah. So let's get into Super Bowl predictions. We might as well. Um, for me, let me start it off. I think the Chiefs will play the Rams in the Super Bowl, and I think the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. I think the Chiefs 
Um, uh, everyone's been underrating the moves they got, which aren't flashy by any means, but in the world of football and the trenches, it means everything. Orlando Brown at left tackle, potentially a top three, top five left tackle in the league, uh, and he's young. Joe Tooney at guard from the Pats, he's a monster. Uh, Kyle Long at guard, also out of retirement, back um, now with the Chiefs. I think that that means uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire has a breakout year, and that's another fantasy guy that you got you should keep an eye out on. I think it's a breakout year. I think Mahomes has all the time in the world, and I think this defense just does the job. I think they win, and I think they beat the Rams, even though the Rams will prove to be uh, a really solid team. I like what they did getting Stafford. Um, yeah, I think he has a great year, potentially even MVP. Um, I think that their defense will carry, and I think what they might need to do is, even though they're in cap hell and, and they have uh, limited assets, I think that they, they need to go and they may make a move, maybe for Kareem Hunt from the Browns, who have two sick running backs. Grab their guy, grab their running back, because um, this is a team that Sean McVay, with under Todd Gurley, that they loved running the ball, and now that they really don't have a number one guy, unless you want to say Sony Michelle or Daryl Henderson is, Kareem Hunt could be that guy, and I think if they get Kareem Hunt, they're definitely a Super Bowl contender, even more so than now. Yeah, and I have the Chiefs in there as well, but I in the NFC, I have the Packers coming out. And I'm saying that because everybody knows it's these guys last year. Rodgers brought back Cobb. Devontae Adams, I believe, is gone after this year as well. And I truly believe the Packers are just going to say, screw this. We're going to come in, not give a crap about you know what anybody else is saying, and they're going to win games. I actually I have the Browns and the Rams, and I have the Browns winning the Super Bowl. I think that their defense – well, their roster in general is absolutely loaded, but their defense, I think, was – the moves that they made to improve their defense were probably the most underrated moves in this offseason. That yep, move for Johnson, that. the third, that was John a, Johnson. That yep, was a yep. fantastic signing. Uh, you know, their one hole on defense was safety, so that was that was terrific. Um, I think Baker takes a major step. Hopefully, I, I hopefully Odell can come in and, and find his spot and fit in where Baker's not forcing him the ball every play. I think the Browns are going to be absolutely dangerous this year. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think the Browns also go, and it comes back down to. Baker Mayfield, the same thing with Daniel Jones, and the same thing with um, some of these other teams. If if he hits this year and he just makes that jump, this is a really good team. If he doesn't, then they're gonna he's gonna hold them back. Let's get into some NFL player awards predictions. Uh, I got Josh Allen MVP. I think that they start running the ball more so than they did last year. I think Zach Moss is a great fantasy guy to keep an eye on. I think he gets a lot of the red zone carries that before Josh Allen was throwing or running in himself. I think by doing this, they keep him um, safer. He's a young guy. You don't want him getting hurt. You don't want him turning into RG3, even though he's a much bigger guy. Um, I think by doing this, he gets more composed. He gets even more confident in the pocket. And I think he throws the ball better, knowing he doesn't have to run it or do all that stuff himself. So I have him at MVP. Uh, Offensive player of the year, I have Stafford coming in right behind MVP at Josh Allen. I could also see Alvin Kamara getting offensive player of the year, though. Uh, at Defensive Player of the Year, I have TJ Watt. I think he was kind of kind of robbed last year, um, but this year I think he makes a makes a point to get it. Uh, offensive Rookie of the Year, I have Najee Harris. I think he goes off. Uh, great fantasy guy to grab, especially if you can grab him in the second round. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Micah Parsons. Very hard for me not to go. Pat Sertain, uh, Pat Sertain um, for, for the Broncos, um, but Parsons just going to be everywhere. Plus, he's he's on quote quote unquote the America's favorite team so he'll get more attention coach of the year I got Mike Vrabel I think the Titans are a very good team this year comeback player of the year I got Dak Prescott uh most improved player I'm thinking Austin Eckler or CD Lamb I think both of those guys become top guys in the league uh best QB Stafford or Josh Allen best running back Alvin Kamara best wide receiver Devontae Adams or DeAndre Hopkins and best tight end Travis Kelsey that's my list all right, so I was in agreement with you about the comeback player of the year with Dak. However, I put my MVP with Mahomes. I have my offensive player of the year with McCaffrey. Put my defense player of the year at TJ Watt. Offensive rookie of the year, I put Fields just because I think he's going to tear everything up once he gets in. Yeah. Defensive rookie of the year, I have Sertain as well. I think just because their other cornerbacks can take the load off of him, it's going to make him that much better. Uh, coach of the year, I have Matt LaFleur just because of what Rodgers is about to do. Um, comeback player of the year, obviously Dak. And then most improved, I actually have Jalen Hurts. I think they're going to be a very crappy team. However, I know this guy is committed and determined to proving everyone wrong and solidifying himself as a uh, quarterback in this league. I like that. I like that pick. 
So for my MVP, I actually went with Derrick Henry. I think he's going to run for 2,000 again, and I think the Titans are going to be a really good team, so I'm going to go with Derrick Henry. Uh, Offensive Player of the Year, I also went Derrick Henry because if you win the MVP, you should be the Offensive Player of the Year. And for Depoy, I actually went with Miles Garrett. I think that addition of Jadavion is really going to help boost up his stats. It's going to give him a few more extra looks. Um, And Offensive Rookie of the Year, I went with Kyle Pitts. Uh, I, I just think he's going to hit the ground running. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year, I also went Micah Parsons. Uh, I just think he's going to be incredible. Coach of the Year, I went Bill Belichick. Uh, I think that Love he's. See that. I think he's going to do a great job with this with this young quarterback and this veteran defense. Uh, comeback Player of the Year, I obviously also have Dak. I also just want to see Dak win it. And uh, most improved, I went Carson once. There we go. Um, let's move on to one more thing right before we have our fantasy section. A um, couple bets I like this week, um, and this is this is a little uh, bit of overview. This is Wednesday, obviously coming out. So I like the Bucks over the Cowboys. I think Dak not really having that preseason or just being able to air out the ball in training camp as much as he'd like. I think that is uh, hurts them, and I think the Bucks have just the full squad returning and obviously it's not going to be right back into into the flow but i think brady hit his hit his flow with this team uh finishing out the year and i think that was the main issue the defense obviously was uh, kind of everywhere the first couple of weeks but um i think the big issue was their offense wasn't really moving as well and i think brady and the offense gets right into pace if the defense takes a little longer it's whatever, but I think the Bucks win this game on Thursday. I think the Rams will beat the Bears because the Bears are stupid and they're starting Andy Dalton. Um, I think the Patriots beat the Jets because Bill Belichick never loses to rookie quarterbacks, knock on wood. Unless you're Lamar Jackson. Yeah, unless you're Lamar Jackson. Um, this one's a little questionable. <clears throat> I like the Jacksonville versus Houston Texans uh, under. I think both teams kind of don't know what to do. And it's and even though they're both very bad defensive teams, they're both very bad offensive teams. And I think it's just going to be a turnover nightmare. Um, honestly, the under or the over could be possible here. They either both just completely run on each other or they both do nothing. Um, and then I last up, I have San Francisco 49ers over Detroit. I think San Fran gets it done. I think Jimmy G's playing for his job and his life. So um, I think he plays a little bit better here. So let's get into some fantasy football. Um, I I had six teams this year, six drafts. One of them was an auction that was a uh, um, going into um, a dynasty league, and I was in it for like five hours. So I've been I've been on my fantasy bullshit this year, and uh, we're coming back with some some new stuff. So let's let's get into um, some breakout candidates for this year. Um, I'll, I'll start first. I think Jacoby Myers is a complete star in the making. Not the star that you look at say oh chris Go- um chris godwin or or um like a calvin ridley but a star as in a patriot star i think he's the perfect guy to grab 80 balls um not that many touchdowns because he doesn't score many touchdowns but i think he grabs 80 to 90 balls this year i think he gets over a thousand yards and i think he's just a beast for the patriots and honestly a ppr guy that you could trust to the likes of julian edelman yeah, I mean, if we're going down, you know, your list, I was in a uh, keeper league and I forgot to keep Ayuk because I took him to like the 11th round yeah. last year and I was so pissed off, but I think he's going to be a great option in fantasy this year. I think Hawkinson is going to be great as well. And yeah. Um, the guy I'm going to go with is Damian Harris, uh, running back for the Patriots. I, You know, purely for the fact that he's playing with a young quarterback and he has an elite offensive right line in front of him. So, you know, they're going to be playing off that old line, running the ball, and I think he'll be the first Patriots running back since LeGarrette Blunt that gets about 70 to 75% of those carries. They usually split up like 30-30-30. I think he's going to get majority of the carries. I agree with that. Um, Marquez Callaway, receiver for the Saints. I think he steps in and he has a great year. Uh, make sure to grab him in your fantasy rosters before it's too late. If he goes berserk week one, then you're going to lose out on him. Um, I think Ryan Tannehill is going to have a monster year being able to get it to Julio Jones now as well as AJ Brown. I think Anthony Ferkser is a deep sleeper that we're going to get to, but I'm going to just jump him in now. Um, 
a solid tight end, but one of those guys that Ryan Tannehill always likes throwing to. And now that um, Johnny Smith is gone, he's going to get increased workload, probably in the red zone as well. Um, I like Clyde Edwards Hilaire, like I said before. Uh, Javante Williams, I think he'll become the starter midway through, maybe even sooner. Uh, beat out Melvin Gordon. I think he'll be a solid back in this league. I really liked him in college. Also, Cortland Sutton, like I said, I think he takes a major step up this year, even though there's a lot of weapons in that offense. Uh, A.J. Dillon um, is is a guy that could be just the touchdown vulture to Aaron, to Aaron Jones. And I think it, it surprised me that they went and they gave Aaron Jones such a big contract because I thought they were going to stick with A.J. Dillon uh, and just let him walk and use that money elsewhere. Um, that surprised me, but I think if anything, they start giving A.J. Dillon more of the red zone touches or uh, splitting up some of the games, getting him a little bit more carries. Um, other guys we have here, Zach Moss, uh, Trey Lance, I think he comes in later in the year. Um, the bus candidates, DJ Chark. I don't really love DJ Chark here. Uh, I think that he's he's a little bit, uh, not, I don't even know the word, but I, I just, I'm really not a fan of him this year. He could completely prove me wrong. I like LaVisca Chenault much more. I think Marvin Jones is a 10 times better of a receiver. Um, uh, yeah, if you want to go. Another ahead. bust that I want to add is uh, I think Adam Thielen's going to have a bit of a down year compared to his standards. Yeah, and I put uh, Miles Gaskin on there. I mean, throughout the preseason, he wasn't getting the majority of touches anyway. So, you know, I think uh, him splitting carries and him not being like a solidified number one back is going to end up hurting him. Um, yeah, so I also think McCole Hardman won't be that great. I think that. Um, I think that Juju Smith might also be um, uh, a little bit of a down year. I don't know. Juju's kind of one of those guys I don't really understand much, but uh, I kind of see him being like a little bit over his prime, even though he's a young guy. I just think he kind of peaked, and he's just going to fizzle out. Uh, could be completely wrong there. But uh, let's get into some deep sleepers here, Benny, if you want to start uh, off. Yeah, so uh, a deep sleeper is uh, Ramondre Stevenson, you know, talented guy, uh, touches the ball a lot, you know. Um you know, uh, especially if you're in a 14-man league or a big league like that, he'd be a great guy to scoop up. Yeah, one of mine was uh, K.J. Hamler on there. I think him being the third option on this offense, and I do think that Drew Locke's going to come back and, you know, fill in for Teddy Bridgewater, and Drew Locke can throw the crap out of the football. So K.J.'s a guy that's just going to run and catch balls. And then for my other sleeper, too, I had the entire New York Jets team because everybody <laughs> is sleeping on that. <laughs> I'm that's dormant great. on that. <laughs> Um, wrapping this up, Pat Fryermuth, tight end um, on the Steelers. I think he'll prove to be a, a pretty solid tight end option. And then going into next year, Chubba Hubbard, I like him behind CMC. If he gets hurt, he might prove to be uh, the Mike Davis that um, that of last year. Uh, Anthony Ferkser, like I said, Blake Jarwin, tight end for the Cowboys. I really liked him last year. He went down for a season-ending injury, but, um, but he's back. Uh, and then another thing to watch out for to wrap this up, I think week one, uh, you always have to look at those guys that go like ballistic week one. Sammy Watkins always does it, and then he fizzles off every time. If you sign Sammy Watkins in your fantasy league, and he drops 30 points, 25 points, whatever it is, and has a huge week one, I think you go ahead and you sell high. You trade him right away. I don't think he's going to sustain it. It's one of those guys that never really does. Um, so this is this is the uh, the issue. Um, you, you either you can get a guy like that and you could sell him high, but you could also be selling him when he goes off. Uh, another guy I'd like to if you're struggling for a quarterback early in the year, say your quarterback's out or something, pick up Ryan Fitzpatrick. He usually does really well weeks one through five, and then he tails off. You know Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, Terry McLaurin, great receiver. He's got some talent on that offense, so I would take a look at him weeks one through four. Yep, and uh, really quickly, just to end it off, uh, some guys to watch this week. Um, keep an eye out on this Jets-Panthers matchup. I think Sam Darnold and Robbie Anderson, I think they might have a huge game, or they might stink it up, and maybe Zach Wilson has a huge game, and the narrative sh uh, shifts away. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, but uh, as long as we're all good here, um, thanks for tuning into episode one of the Tipsy Tailgate. Uh, we're glad to be back. Please make sure to download the ColorCast app and follow us at Tipsy Tailgate. Follow us on Instagram as we're posting all of these things. And especially follow us on TikTok. Uh, don't miss out. We're giving fantasy news. We're giving NFL news every day. And you don't want to miss out on it. Uh, join the 600 followers. And follow us on YouTube too where, where this video will be. And all of our videos will be following our ColorCast live 
uh, shows on Wednesday. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys later. See ya.